5EP Sports presents the Buffalo Wild Wings High School Football Game of the Week. Brought to you by Buckeye Toyota, Bay Food Market, Fairfield County Adam H., The Savings Bank, Sheridan Funeral Home, Fairfield Federal, Fairfield DD, The Frankie Smith Funeral Home, The Edwards Insurance Agency, Dagger Law, The Carriage Company, Personal Touch Party Rentals, North Body Shop, Fairfield Medical Center, and Buckeye Lake Marina. Hey, good evening, everybody. Welcome to the Interface Video Productions High School Football Game of the Week. I'm Jared Stewart alongside Tim Shoemaker. And joining us down on the field, Marion Royster. Tonight we're at Bloom Carroll High School, Carl Fell Stadium, for a Division Three Region 11 playoff action between the Bloom Carroll Bulldogs hosting the Beechcroft Cougars. And glad to have you along on a beautiful night for high school football, Week 11. And I tell you what, Shu, the first thing we need to talk about is this beautiful new new turf that they have here at Bloom Carroll as well as a, a new set of lights. It's just a, a gorgeous facility here at Bloom Carroll. It is, and that LED lighting sure brings this, you know, just brings the field and the colors out. Tonight's pregame is brought to you by Personal Touch Party Rentals. Carol and Eric Whittington would like to invite you to stop by Personal Touch Party Rentals and events in Lancaster. They are a small family-owned business and have been servicing the central Ohio area since 2003. They would love to help plan your next event, weddings, special events, even corporate events, all with a personal touch. They can be reached at 740-689-6991. Let's jump right in talk about the matchup. Uh, Bloom Carroll comes in 9-1. and one. The only loss of the season was week number one to an undefeated Harvest Prep team. Uh, Beechcroft comes in at 6-3, and three, have only played nine games, but they're coming off their second straight City League North Championship. And, Shu, this is a team that uh, isn't really used to uh, playing in, in, in playoff uh, atmosphere, but, but they feel pretty good about where they, where they stand after the last couple years winning the City League North. Yeah, they had a really good season and a, and a really big win uh, two weeks ago against Columbus East, who is 8-1 and one and actually is hosting a game in Division Four tonight against yeah. Megs. Um, but Beechcroft is is interesting, uh, Jared, in that then they stubbed their toe last week in week 10 to Columbus Northland right. and only scored seven points. So wow. we'll see tonight if they can get a little more consistency out of their offense. Let's bring in Marion to talk about a little bit more about this Beechcroft Cougar team. And Marion, uh, Tim had a chance to talk to uh, the, the coaches from both these teams uh, this week. And, and one of the things that Coach McKinney is concerned about with Beechcroft is the broken plays. Uh, they've got some playmakers. Their quarterback can, can, you know, on a broken play, can turn it into a 30, 40 yard uh, game. He absolutely can, Jared. Uh, I didn't tell you, he's, as when it comes to athleticism, uh, the Cougars are going to be one of the more athletic teams that you'll see. I mean, it really just jumps off the page at you when you watch the tape. Uh, just athletes all over the field. And again, when you have athletes like that, as you said, sometimes their best play can be a broken play, uh, especially with the quarterback, Aurelius Scott, uh, just an incredible athlete and is, has become so accustomed to just making plays, as they say, kind of backyard draw them in the dirt, so to speak. Yeah. So it'll be very important for Bloom Carroll to maintain uh, their defensive uh, uh, just discipline, uh, staying in their gaps, not getting lost on plays, um, and continuing to bottle uh, the quarterback up and not let them make them plays, those plays off of the broken ones. Jump over to the Bloom Carroll side, and, you know, typically in our pregame, we talk about playmakers, we're talking about offensive guys, but as Mario touched on, the defense for Bloom Carroll, I want to talk about Andrew Marshall. This guy's got 82 solo tackles this year to go with 60 assists, 142 total tackles. That's getting it done. Yeah, along with 23 tackles for loss. Wow. Um, he, he's dynamite. That's why he's going to Kent State. Yep. He's, Jared, he's, he's that good. He's 6'2", 225 pounds, uh, linebacker, can run sideline to sideline. And that's what I hear from the people that are impressed with him is he can run to the football from sideline to sideline and chase people down. Offensively, what should we expect out of Coach McKinney's team? Uh, I think you're going to see him line up in what they call the heavy package, and they are just going to run straight at Beechcroft and try to wear them down. He feels their line has maybe a little edge at this point going into the game, and they want to take that at him and then see if uh, Beechcroft can come back because they have guys playing on both sides yeah. of the line. 
uh, offensively and defensively. Coach Jeremy McKinney in his first year as a head coach here at Bloom Carroll. He's been the uh, assistant here for several years, and he's a local guy. Uh, grew up in Lancaster. He graduated from Fisher Catholic High School. Actually had a very successful high school football career, and it's very nice to see him uh, getting an opportunity to be the head coach. He's certainly making the most of it here in his first year. Yeah, and he certainly, you know, he has his own plan and his own philosophy, and they have executed it to a T this yeah. year. Um, you know, Coach Bartholomew, who left, he had his way of doing things, and we, even if you're on staff and things, you have to develop what you want to do right. and your identity, and he's done that, and you got to give him a big pat on the back yep. for that. Tonight's kickoff is brought to you by Sheridan Funeral Home. Sheridan Funeral Home is proud to be supporting high school football. They've been serving the communities of Lancaster and Fairfield County for over 100 years. Beautiful night at Carl Fell Stadium here at Bloom Carroll High School for week number 11, the first round of the playoffs, Division Three, Region 11. It's Bloom Carroll going to be uh, kicking off to Beechcroft. The Cougars got here late. Uh, actually, when we were pulling in at 6.15, they were just getting off the bus then. But uh, they went through their warm-ups in a hurry, and they're ready to roll. Yeah, I think by week 10, you ought to know what it takes to get ready. Yeah. And, guys, I can attest, making that drive down on uh, uh, 33 can get a little, uh, you know, traffic can get a little uh, tight sometimes. So they may have experienced some of the same traffic that I've seen on several games driving down from my place of business uh, during rush hour. Set to kick it off for Bloom Carroll is number 27. That's Trayton McKee. And back deep for Beechcroft. Number one, Roshan Burns. And over on the far side, I believe that is Aurelius Scott. Is that number two, Marion? Is that Aurelius? Over on the far uh, side? 11, I think is 11, what I see. 11, okay. Well, if you put the ones together, you get two, Jerry. <laughs> so that's 11 Tyrell and Russell. four, excuse me, yeah. All right. So we'll be uh, headed to the side of Tyrell Russell. What a kick for McKee. It's a touchback. Let's get into our keys of the game, brought to you by North Body Shop, providing quality customer service, parts, and reliability. Since 1979, owner Mark North will provide you with a free written warranty on each estimate. That's Mark North of North Body Shop. He'll treat you right. Well, obviously, I think what we just spoke about with Marion talking about the big plays and the broken plays that Beechcroft can do, and if they can get in space and, and maybe, maybe make a big play and score, and for Carroll, it's just they want to create a physical atmosphere. Yeah. They want to be as physical as they can, they don't, they're not worried about the beauty of how it looks. They're, they're worried about the execution yep. of it. Beechcroft comes out. It'll be a really a Scott out of that shotgun formation. They spread them out all over the field. Three receivers out to the near side, one out to the far side. And it's a double pass. A pass is going to be up for grabs, and it's through the hands of number one, Roshan Burns. What a story Roshan is. And right away we're going to get a chance to talk about Roshan He's a, a special player. He's, he's made some plays all season long, but if you notice, if you look at Roshan, he, he had an amputation when he was eight months old, just below the elbow, and uh, it's, it's amazing to see what he's been able to do on the football field. He also plays basketball. Yeah, just a little bit too much air in that yeah. pass. Yeah. But a good call. I really like the call coming yeah. out the Why first not? play. It was number six, or number five, J Jalen Radford making the pass. On second down, short gain for the Cougars. Number eight, Malachi Tarver comes off the field. So second down and, or third down and eight for the Cougars. Now let's see if Bloom Carroll will show some pressure here, Jared. Got him backed up to the 22-yard line, third down and eight. Scott, straight drop. Now he's going to be flushed out of the pocket. And he's got pressure, and he's going to be sacked. And he dumped it off, or did he fumble it? It just slipped out of his hands when he tried to cut, and he's having a little yeah, trouble getting is. up. That's not good. No. Trying to see the number. I think, was that our man that we talked about? It's Andrew Marshall that came flying in there. And really, a Scott is in some pain. He's the... Six foot, 135 pound junior quarterback for Beechcroft. And I believe it was Marshall that came in there with the hit. Fumble was recovered. I don't know, Luke Preveston, 13, was out here See. and did a really good job. No, that's 43. 
Right here, yep. making that hit. Yeah, it was, it was number 11. Yeah, that's Marshall. Couldn't really see him. Marion, you're, you're down there. What's he favoring? Uh, it, it looks like uh, perhaps some sort of knee injury, guys. Looks like his right leg, as soon as he tried to get up and put uh, pressure on that leg and weight on it, it, he just could not do it. Tried to hop around and, again, just fell to the ground. I don't know so much in pain. I, he obviously is in a lot of that, but also just disappointment, guys. Yeah, you can see yeah. it in his face. He's just – I think it's one of those injuries, like you know it when it happens, and I hate to wish this on I hope it's not it, but it may be very serious. And you can see the concern yeah. um, on Coach Simmons' face as well. And, just and, very concerned. Yeah, and he already has a brace on that leg left knee as well and shoot you and I talked about this on the way on the drive over the fact that uh, this Beechcroft team only has about 32 guys on the roster and most of them play both ways and so right. you know depth could be an issue yeah I think they're just playing around you know 14 15 guys overall and and <laughs> especially your quarterback that is you've kind of run your whole offense through. right while uh while Aurelius is getting uh assisted to the sideline. Let's take a look at that Beechcroft schedule, what they've had this year. There it is, that surprise loss last week. Yeah, I think more than anything else you look, they had, they had you know, reeled off six wins in a row. Yeah. And I don't know, maybe they got, you know, since they had beaten East, which was a very good team, maybe they just got a little uh, comfortable. Bloom Carroll now gonna have great field position to start their first offensive possession inside the Beechcroft 20 yard line. Just mistakes plaguing Beechcroft here in this first possession. Yeah, fortunately, a bad snap for Beechcroft on that one. That one just rolled back to the to yeah. the punter there from the long snapper. Just couldn't handle it off, off the bounce there and uh, had to try to get what he could get, which obviously wasn't much. Here comes the Bloom Carroll offense led by number 10. That's sophomore quarterback Ethan Thanthanavong. He's a six foot 200 pounder. And they're gonna line up like you said, Shu, and just yep. run it straight forward and see what they can do here. And Thanavong hands it off, that's Marshall. And he's got about three or three yards on first down. Well, you know Dylan Armatrot's back there also. And yep. he, he broke the school rushing record for a season yards. Uh, got to give him a big shout out right there. And in all honesty, this team broke the, for 10 game season, the rushing record that was held by a previous team wow. uh, this year. So that says a lot about their ability to run the football. And they've got some size up along that sure offensive do. line. I mean, when you got a six foot 10, 305 pounder up there. And here comes Marshall and he is gonna be diving for the end zone. Did he get in? There's the signal, touchdown Bulldogs. So what a great start for Coach McKinney's Bloom Carroll Bulldog team. Yep, here you see right here, makes a nice cut. And really there wasn't a lot of uh, resistance there, Jared, for the runner. Great job by Grant Dolan, as well as leading the blocking Chase Plants. The first back through the, through the hole. McKee, field goal or extra point is up and good, but there's a flag before the kick. So it's on Beechcroft, so the attempt will be coming again. <clears throat> and once again, they jump early. Well, I mean, if you're not gonna take the penalty, it's really not a bad <laughs> move because Unlike higher levels, they then just do it on the right. kickoff. Right. Why not? Yeah. If they don't call it, then you may have I an mean, edge. <laughs> what's, it, what's it move it? A, a foot? Yeah. <laughs> and you don't want it a foot when you're kicking an extra point. Yeah. You want it where you're used to kicking it. Right. It's up and good. So a 10-16 to play in the first quarter. The Bloom Carroll Bulldogs lead the Beechcroft Cougars 7 to nothing here on the high school football game of the week. Let's take a look at some other games going on around the area tonight in playoff action, Division I, Region Three. It's number 16, Lancaster. We say at Gehanna Lincoln, but it's actually via Whitehall. 
uh, who's the number one seed. It's going to be a tough a tough battle for the uh, Golden Gales. Also in Division One, Region Three, number 12, Groveport Madison at number five, Pickerington North. It's number 13, Central Crossing at number four, Pickerington Central. In Division Two, number nine, Canal Winchester is at number eight, Independence. In Division uh, Three, this same region, Region 11, number 16, Circleville at number one, Sheridan. It's uh, in Division Four, Region 15, number 10, Bishop Hartley at number seven, New Lexington. In uh, a game you mentioned, Shoe, number 15, Megs at number two, Harvest Prep is uh, Division Five, Region 19. In Division Six, Region 23, team we saw last week, number nine, Burn Union at number eight, Shenandoah. And finally, in Division 7, Region 27, number 10, Fairfield Christian at number 7, Bridgeport. We'll be checking those scores throughout the night as McKee kicks it off to the Cougars and once again backs them all the way up to the end zone for another touchback. What a great job by the kicker for Bloom Carroll. That's Trayton McKee. You know, Bloom Carroll has a history of Yes, kickers. they do. You know, we could go back and through the records and, and name quite a few kids that have been quite impactful on their football yeah. teams. It's a weapon. I want to go down to Marion. You know, Marion, when you're in heading into week number 11 and, and your roster is already thin, how many reps during the week are your backups getting, especially backup quarterback? Uh, gosh, sure. That, that's a good question. A, a lot of it depends on the situation. I, I think when you have a, a, a situation with a player as talented as Aurelia Scott, probably not many. Sometimes when you have a guy that, that can, you know, the, the guys have a little bit more confidence in, they might want to put him in. So should have some more, but uh, oftentimes not many. Right now it's a freshman, Nehemiah Scott, in at quarterback, number 15 for the Cougars. That little screen pass is completed out to the far side to well, Jaden Douglas. I mean, this is asking a lot. You're playing yes, against a really, really good defensive unit, yep. and you you got to bring a freshman in Whew. to play a quarterback. I mean, I wouldn't wish that on anybody. No way. Well, unfortunately, when you run the ball against this Bloom Carroll defense, you're kind of playing into their hands, you know, there. Yeah. So it's it's not like they, you know, have a really good opportunity to, to rely on the run and rely, and depend on that quite a bit. Scott, again, back to pass. This time we've got whistles, and it's going to be a false start on the Cougars. Back him up five, makes it second down, and 19. There's a look at freshman quarterback Nehemiah Scott, five foot nine, 120 pounds. And the thing of it is, you know, looking at the roster, he's not even listed as a as a quarterback. He's listed as a, a wide receiver and defensive back. So who knows how much experience he's had. Oh, he takes a big hit, and he completes the pass all the way out to the 21. Man, Marshall came in again. <laughs> we talked about how, how he can run. Wow. He, he just showed his ability Watch right here. Watch this. Yeah. This is welcome to the varsity. Oh, wow. Man, and he was prone because he left his feet to throw the ball. Yep. More importantly, guys, Nehemiah Scott popped right up. Yes, he did. Right, right off of that. You would have thought that he might have stayed down for a second or two, but uh, no such luck for uh, uh, for the Bulldogs. I want to give some credit to Tristan Bridge as well. He uh, had some initial pressure in there that forced Scott to roll to his left. Again, pressure. Scott dumps it out, screen pass, and it's going nowhere. Maybe a gain of one on the play. It was completed. To, I think that was, was that number eight, Malachi Tarver? I think so. So fourth down and seven after the gain of one on that play. So give give the Cougars credit. I mean, they, they were backed all the way up to around the 10-yard line. So they were at least able to get uh, their punter some room here. As the clock rolls at 8.43 here in the first quarter, Bloom Care already up 7-0. Low line drive kick, that's returnable for the Bulldogs. Gets out to about the 44 yard line. On the return for Bloom Carroll is number 21, that's Broden Bishop. So Bloom Carroll comes back on offense. Didn't take them long on their first possession to score. Of course they didn't have uh, very no. many yards to go either. Not starting in uh 
Beechcroft territory again. Yeah. And Thanavong has Chase Plant standing to his left. He's going to be the lead blocker here. Look at this run. Cutting back and forth. That's number seven, Dylan Armantrout, the five foot nine hundred and eighty pound junior. He's one of many guys who got uh, all mid state league honors for this Bloom Carroll team. Yeah, Andrew Jared. Marshall, Chase Plants, yep. Dylan Armantrout, Jaden Ball, Broden Bishop, all first team, and then a host of guys, second team and and uh, honorable mention. Well, when you go undefeated in the league, that's what happens. Yep. Second down and four for Bloom Carroll. Here's Armand Trout again. Wow, shot out of a cannon all the way up across the 25. Another first down for the Bulldogs. He's got some speed. Did he see the replay right here? Just great blocking there too, Jared. It takes a combination. Tonight's replays are brought to you by Dagger Law. Thanks to Dagger Law, bringing you all the replays tonight. They're local, they're trusted in their experience. That's right. There's a good look into the sophomore quarterback, then Thanavong's face mask. He's going to pitch it out. Armand Trout again. Armand Trout down inside the 15 yard line and tackled out of bounds at about the 11. I, I tell you, their line just gets a great push off the snap. Yep. You know, and at any level of football, if you can win at the point of attack, whether it be offense or defense, you've got a great chance of being successful. Devon Mackey on the tackle for the Cougars. First and 10 at the 11 for Bloom Carroll. This time, Plants lines up behind Armand Trout, or uh, behind Thanavong, and this is Plants. He just got tripped up a little bit right about the line of scrimmage and falls forward. Yeah, Chase has had an extra, e excellent career here at Carroll, you know, being a linebacker and uh, in the backfield. He's, yeah. he's an impactful player. Right. And uh, just has been a rock solid for them. How about the success of uh, Bloom Carroll Athletics continuing? They've got their girls volleyball team in the district final. Their, uh, I think it's, is it boys soccer or yes. girls soccer? In, boys soccer. In uh, district final. Second down and eight. Here's Armand Trout. Armand Trout spin move. Gets up to about the five yard line. It's gonna bring up a third down and a couple, two or three for the Bulldogs. Yeah, he made a great cut that time because Beechcroft had some good pressure and he just made a nice cut, slip back up inside, make a positive yeah. yardage for the dogs. Yeah, we, we covered the Bulldogs earlier uh, this year, guys. The one thing I was very impressed with Armitrout was his vision. Yeah. Uh, just really incredible vision and allows him to make a lot of those plays, you know, at the line of scrimmage, see those holes and, and get to the daylight uh, as it presents itself. Here's Plants. Plants driving those feet to the goal line. Touchdown, Bloom Carroll. He just kept the feet moving. He was hit early and just kept on chugging and got to the goal line. It's just power football, Jared. You see the replay right here. Watch Chase. One, two, three, oh, wow. four. That's just a good hard run. That's what I mean. That's just power football. McKee back on to attempt the extra point. Low snap. And they're going to be forced to just try to do something with it and not going to convert here. I'm going to get down to Marion. Marion, we talked about Dylan Armantrout. You know, he's not very big. He's five foot nine hundred eighty pounds. He runs a lot bigger than that, though, it seems. 
Yes, he does. Yeah, and, and you'll see, you know, a lot of times the guys, it's, it's not so much, you know, their size. You know, if, if a guy's able to run very well behind his pads, despite not being very large in stature, you know, if that, that can be just as effective, you know. And, and also, you know, with, with guys, sometimes, you know, height uh, is, is sometimes one of the things that if you don't have that, um, as a running back, it sometimes plays your advantage. Yeah. Uh, I, I was six uh, one, and while that doesn't sound very uh, tall, I was a little longer, yeah. um, at, at which which played well in basketball. But I used to always get criticized uh, as I was being recruited to say, "Man, he just runs so high. He runs so high." And I was, well, it's, <laughs> you know, maybe Eric Dickerson. Like, not that I was as good as Eric Dickerson, <laughs> but but that was the comparison that I I tried to use. Uh, but yeah, no, Armstrong does an incredible job. Again, the, you combine the vision with his ability to run behind his blocks and. He Again, sometimes that smaller stature, he runs hard. Then again, you're coming with, with Plants and Marshall right behind him who run probably even harder as far as power backs go. Just just a really tough combination to stop. A key to kick it off. His first two tonight have gone all the way to the end zone for touchbacks. This one will travel to the five-yard line. It's fumbled. Picked up right there. It's number four. It's Jaden Douglas on the return. Douglas up the near sideline. There is a flag that comes in. And I think that one might be coming back. Yeah, it's an illegal block. We'll get the call here from the referee. Blindside block on Beechcroft. That's a big one. I don't think our, I don't know if he's, if his microphone is not working or, but uh, we do have, I think we have a list of our officials tonight. There they are. Yeah, Charles Anderson's our referee. John Welbrock is the umpire. Head linesman is Scott Pierce. Line judge is Ryan Schwederman. The back judge is Matthew Ferdinand. And our center judge is Brian Lowry. Hey, I want to remind you that you can find live and past games on our YouTube channel. Just search for CLN, your hometown connection on YouTube, to find games and other local programming. And while you're there, make sure to subscri click, click subscribe so you won't miss any of the action. And also, don't forget to check us out on Facebook and Twitter. You can check out those uh, social media platforms. Just search for Interphase Video Productions. Glad to have you along tonight for this playoff matchup where Bloom Carroll leads it early 13 to nothing. And here's a run on first down for Beechcroft over the left side. Pick up maybe a couple on the play. That was Roshan Burns on the carry. If you're just joining us, the starting quarterback, Aurelia Scott, went down in the first possession for Beechcroft with what looked like a possible knee injury. So they now have a freshman in at quarterback, Nehemiah Scott. And here's a run around the right side. Tyrell Russell trying to get to the corner, and he'll get out just across the 10-yard line. Yeah, they're going to make your defense go sideline to sideline because the, the perimeter is on the edges is where their strength yeah. is. If you're looking at, the, uh, at our camera, here's a replay of that. Yeah, just a little quick toss. Quarterback was under center. But watch the pursuit. Look at Marshall. Yeah. He goes sideline to sideline. Yep. If you look from our top camera, Jim Spires' camera may look like there's fog, but there's not. That's actually from the grill coming in. I think we can start to smell it all the way up here in the press Man. box. They do, a they do a nice job in the in the uh, concession stand here at Bloom Carroll. There's pressure again on Scott, and he's going to be sacked in the backfield. And look who it is again. That's Marshall. Andrew Marshall. They just kind of cut him loose. You know, the fortunate thing for Andrew, too, is he has some linemen in front of him that yes. require attention. Thus allows him the ability to move and use his talent to make all those tackles. Yeah. He's just so active. Fourth down and nine for Beechcroft. This time they will be forced to punt from their end zone. And back deep for Bloom Carroll, standing right about the 41-yard line is Broden Bishop for the Bulldogs. And the punt is blocked, and Bloom Carroll's gonna fall on it for a touchdown. Falling on it was number 19. That is Chase Plants. Not sure if he's the one that blocked it. Let's check the replay here. I think he Looks. and somebody else together, were, that's that's Marshall. Looks like it. Chase made the recovery. What a job by them, just pushing forward and pushing that offensive line into the backfield. Now 
I, I know Coach McKinney, and you don't want to feel too com comfortable, but I know he felt they really had a significant advantage yeah. at the on the line. Extra point is up and good for Bloom Carroll, and Marion couldn't ask for much better of a, of a start if you're the Bulldogs. No, no, you really couldn't. I mean, again, not, not just the fact that they've been able to, uh, you know, score really at will, uh, you know, but the sharpness of what they're doing. You know, they, they re really are able to uh, get those chunk plays on offense. Uh, you talk about, you know, not even allowing a first down yet on defense and then making a big play in special teams. Uh, that, that is the, uh, the epitome of complementary football, all three phases of the game, uh, working tremendously uh, in concert, and you see the results, 20 to nothing, out to an early lead in the first quarter. And tonight's first half scoreboard sponsor is Buckeye Toyota. Buckeye Toyota would like to wish all the local athletes best of luck this season. Buckeye Toyota is your hometown dealer that is here to help. Visit us online at mybuckeyetoyota.com. Here's a look at the grills firing up the smoke. That's what we're seeing in the air. Yeah. It's not fog, it's smoke, but boy, they're, they do it They do it well here in this uh, concession Tell stand at Bloom Carroll. Yeah, Two weeks in a row, we've had down a burn. We had a, oh, some good food. We'll be salivating up here <laughs> shortly. I'll tell you, that gets up here. McKee to kick it off. After this kickoff, I'll give you some score updates from other games. Going to squib this one. It'll be taken at the 30-yard line by number 10. That's Devon Mackey. Some scores around the area in Division One. It's Pickerington North over Groveport Madison, 10-6 in the first quarter. Pickerington Central leads Central Crossing, 14-0 in the first quarter. Sheridan leads Circleville, 7-0 in the second quarter. We have no score listed yet for Harvest Prep and Megs. New Lexington leads Bishop Hartley, 8-7 in the first quarter. It's Gahanna Lincoln over uh, Lancaster, 14-8 in the first quarter. Shenandoah leads Burn Union, 7-0. And Fairfield Christian leads Bridgeport 7-0. Both those games also in the first quarter. We'll continue to keep you updated on those scores throughout the night as Beechcroft right now has their best field position to start out a drive. And on this run, that one might have gone a little bit farther for Tyrell Russell, but somebody got a shoestring and brought him down after a game of about four. Yeah, he was just getting the motor running. He right was. There. You heard the call, Jet Jones on the tackle for the Bulldogs. Second and six for Beechcroft. Here's Jerome Killebrew, and that's going nowhere but backwards. Bloom Carroll says they have the football, but they'll say he was down, bring up a third down and long. I tried to run a little counter there, but at this point they haven't influenced them enough, so. And we've got another injury on the field. I think, is that Killebrew, the running back, getting up slow? Yes, it is. Already lost Aurelia Scott, their quarterback, earlier tonight. Sure, I guess another game that we need to uh, check on the score is Tri Valley and Jonathan Alder. Yeah. Is that, that one directly imp is a. You know, who the winner of this game will take on the winner of that one. Yeah, if, if Alder wins and Bloom Carroll wins, Bloom Carroll hosts. Yeah. If Tri-Valley wins and Bloom Carroll win, wins, they go to Dresden. Right now it's Tri-Valley up 6-0 in that one in the second quarter. Back here at Carl Fell Stadium, it's 20 to nothing. Bloom Carroll with third down and six for Beechcroft, and it's an incomplete pass, and Cougars will be forced to punt again. So fourth down and six or seven here for Beechcroft. Jonathan Alder is a team that Bloom Carroll is familiar with. They played them in Week three and beat them 35 to nothing. Yeah, when I, I've talked to some people about the, the older who has a traditionally good good football program, yeah. they said the only thing that's, uh, wow, good kick. Yeah, really. it was. Finish my thought here in a second. That's Bishop on the return, gets out near the 50-yard line. Um, but anyway, older right now, they, they've, they've pretty much fallen into the – they're one-dimensional offensively. Run the ball really well, have a great back, but they just have not been able throughout the season to, to have a respected passing yeah. game. But Broden Bishop does a lot of things for Kerry. You know, yep. 
earlier in the year they were even running some wildcat with him at quarterback and uh, he was having big games just to give a little diversity as then Dunabong was developing yeah they would run Bishop and he plays a lot of safety I think he makes all, a lot of their calls on defense runs back punts he just he's just like a master of all you know look at this setup lined up in the backfield is Kale Craner to block and Kale Craner is an offensive listed as an offensive lineman 5'9", 220, number 71. You don't see a 71 no. in the backfield very often. Just got to make sure you report. That's right. <laughs> Second down and three for the Bulldogs after that run. Yeah, this is part of that so-called jumbo package. <clears throat> Heck, it's so crowded here. We even got dinosaurs down here below <laughs> us. And Thanavog hands it off. And this is Bishop on the carry. He's going to pick up about one on the play, make it third down and two for Bloom Carroll. Yeah, real good job right there by the beach cross front. They really fought off some blocks there, Jared, and, and got some help from the secondary. I, I don't think at this point Carroll's not going to do anything but just line up and run yeah. at you. We have not seen a pass tonight. We probably will not out of Bloom Carroll's. The first quarter comes to an end with the Bulldogs on top of Beechcroft, 20 to nothing. And let's give a shout out to Buffalo Wild Wings. Thanks to Larry Tipton and the crew for great food, great service, and the best sports viewing in town. It's all at Buffalo Wild Wings in the Plaza Shopping Center on North Memorial Drive in Lancaster. Beautiful night for high school football. We've been very, very fortunate uh, this season. We've, we've really had no bad weather on a Friday night this season. No, it looks good. Even next week looks good after we get by Halloween on yeah. Monday. So Yeah. Actually looks warm even next week, up in the upper upper 60s. Yeah, I've, um, I've been trying to get my outdoor stuff, you know, fall cleanup yeah. partially done this week. I I, but I saw the weather, and I kind of put a little more off for next week. So. <laughs> Marion, uh, as we have a little break here uh, for the quarter switch, Bobcats had themselves a big win last week. Yes, they did. Yeah, they, I, I didn't catch last week's game, but the game against Western Michigan a couple weeks ago, yeah. uh, very impressive. Again, they're, they're really kind of hitting their stride. Uh, obviously had some tough matchups earlier in the season with uh, Penn State. Um, you know, when you, you look at how they're playing, you know, the, the, the offense always has – has been pretty quick strike and, and, and does a good job, but the defense is doing a lot better than it did earlier in the, in the season. And yeah. uh, again, just trying to come together, and it's good to see, uh, especially in the, in, the, in the second year for uh, for the right. Having a uh, a much better season so far this this year. They're excited down in Athens. Named the field after Frank Solich last week. Yes, they did. Yeah, that was nice to see and. Obviously, com very well deserved. Right, Coach Solich, everything he was able to do for the program, and my biggest regret was that I didn't get a season to play with. Yeah. I, I enjoyed playing for Jim Grove, but uh, Frank Solich is, is, is a really special uh, coach and special human being, yes. uh, oh. and did wonders for that program. Is he the all-time uh, wins leader in MAC history as a coach? I believe. I think he is. Yeah, I, I, I think he he did pass that record before. Uh, he, you know, unfortunately, a, a medical issue caused him to retire. Yeah. <laughs> He'd probably still be coaching today. Right. I, happened yeah penalty on Beechcroft moves them up five yards first down and five for Bloom Carroll the ball spotted at the Cougar 37 yard line and Thanavong will give it off to Bishop and Bishop just follows that offensive line up to about the 35 second down and three Second down and three coming up for Bloom Carroll. Check out the size of some of their linemen. 78, Will Green, six foot 10, 305. Looks like a post player to me. <laughs> <laughs> the true basketball coach. Yeah, you, got your, you got your basketball eyes on, don't you? Hey, they start practice, this, I think, tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I was Actually, looking at. Actually, I think at. tonight, tonight's uh, opening night. First, yeah, yeah. first, they were having tryouts here tonight. Yeah. Before the football game. Yeah, and you know, that's when I look out there at Coach Simmons thinking he's the basketball coach also at <laughs> Beachcock. Man, he's he, he's a busy gentleman. Yes, he is. 
Bishop gets the first down. So first and 10 for Bloom Carroll at the Beechcroft 30. You know, Shu, we were talking uh, in pregame about the new turf here at uh, Carl Fell Stadium, the new lights. And as, as we look out at the lights, I noticed this at a game earlier this year. I went down with Fisher Catholic to uh, Green, Franklin Furnace, and they had brand new turf field, brand new lights just like this. I, you, you see there's, there's lights that are pointing up as well. And I'm not sure if that kind of disperses some of the light that's coming down. It's, it's interesting. I, I'm, I'm certainly no expert in that, but I will tell you this. The one thing that, uh, you, you know, we talked about it, this is being done at Beavers Field also, baseball field in Lancaster. Yeah. But the one thing that it does is, and you can see over here, you don't see much background light. No, you don't. It makes it darker. And, and with, the, with the way those are pointed straight down, yes. there's no problem with looking up and, and losing a ball in the lights. No, it's totally different. Um, it, it, it's really impressive. Yeah. Yeah, and guys, I can tell you, as a former receiver and return man, <laughs> that can make a difference, a yeah. big difference, more so than, than a bright light from a sunny day right. that you're playing during the day. Good job defensively here yep. by Beechcroft coming in number 20. That's Deshaun Henderson. Tackle for a loss there. That's a good defensive play for them. Third down and two coming up for Bloom Carroll. Yeah, that's been much more resistant here this series. Watch Henderson here. Yep. Really good play. Third down and two. Marshall comes back into the game for Bloom Carroll. He will line up behind Van Thanavong, who has Bishop and Plants flanking him. Here is Marshall going right side over that tackle, and Marshall inside the 10, still rumbling to the five, to the goal line, touchdown, Bulldogs. Wow. That's a heck of a run it right there. Sure is. Talk about Bulldog, it looks like he's been kept in a cage. They let him out. <laughs> Watch this run. Impressive. I mean, we thought, you know, he's going to get the first down, but right here we're thinking for sure he's getting tackled. And somehow he gets <laughs> out of that head. one. Wow. That's a great effort. Yes, it was. Andrew Marshall, six foot three, 225 pound senior. Extra point for McKee is up and good. And with 8.18 to play in the first half, Bloom Carroll extends their lead to 27-0. Guys, I got to tell you, I think eight. ability or might want to double think about uh, putting pl uh, Marshall on defense there. I, yeah. I know he's committed to play on the defensive side of the football, but uh, he's shown so much tonight. The running back really might be nice to offensive side of the ball the next yeah he, he is definitely a weapon for them yeah but you never know when they go off uh, to play at a university that 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 decision somebody may talk to him about that yeah you know and pick up on that not everybody goes and plays the exact position once you go to the next level so McKee to kick it off again He's kicked it to the end zone, and he's, we've also seen him squib a couple, or squib one anyway. And this one he's going to kick deep. And it'll be taken at the one-yard line and fumbled, but picked back up there. On the return, it's Jaden Douglas. And Douglas still on his feet somehow, but he's going to be swarmed under inside wow. the five-yard line. And a flag comes in from way back. This might be another blindside block on Beechcroft that was way away from the play. Yeah, I missed it. And over on the sideline, Douglas is not happy. Slams his helmet down. You get the call and the official, it is on Beechcroft. The return man, Jaden Douglas, He's a state champ in the 300-meter hurdles last year. Yes, and he ended up fifth, I think, in the 100-meter wow. in Division One. that is. Wow. That's impressive. Yes. Well, they did a great job of just pinning the whole thing in yeah. and having discipline in their lanes. So Beechcroft, who's had trouble moving the football now, has their back to the wall here, back to the goal line. And the pass is incomplete. 
intended little screen pass for Jerome Killebrew. He's got a feel for Nehemiah Scott. I'm sure he was not expecting to play uh, in this game. No. Freshman coming in had to uh, come in after the or during the first drive, offensive drive, after Aurelius Scott went out with that injury. This is a Beechcroft team that uh, they've won their second straight City League North Championship this year. They have not won a playoff game, though, since 2016, and they have not defeated a non-city program in the postseason since uh, they were Division IV, Region 13 runner-up in 2014. And that's one of the goals that uh, Coach has talked about, Humphrey Simmons has talked about, is we got to get over that hump. We, gotta, we can't just be satisfied with winning our league, with getting to the playoffs. we got to get over that hump and, and win a playoff game. It's true. I'm going to bring up a third down, or second down. And looks like about eight or nine for Beechcroft. And another flag on the play. Again on the Cougars. They've had several penalties tonight. After that one, it backs them up half the distance to the goal. Second down and 11 for the Cougars. Out of the shotgun, Scott. His pass is tipped at the line of scrimmage and intercepted, diving for it. Is that Marshall on the, on the interception? Yes, it is. Wow. Andrew Marshall. <laughs> He's been all over the place. Let's see who got the hand on it. 75. That's Grant Dolan. Another big guy. 6'3", 250 on that defensive line. Did a great job. He's being blocked, but you know they tell him, even if you're getting blocked, get a paw up there, and you might, might uh, get a hand on it. He sure did. Well, in sports, the greatest thing you can do defensively is keep pressure on the ball. Right. Um, whether it be football, basketball, whatever it is, pressure on, on the ball, hockey, the puck, you got to keep pressure on. And Thanavong hands it off and diving for the goal line. Chase Plants, is he in? No, he says down. He fumbled, but he was down. I think they said he fumbled. It's going to bring up a second down and goal from very short. Can't get much closer than that. Here's a look at that run by Plants. He stretched out the ball, yeah. reaching for the goal line. I think when he hit the ground, the ground caused the fumble. Second a goal for the Bulldogs, already leading 27 to nothing. And running it in for the touchdown for the Bulldogs is number 22. That's Colin Willett, another senior getting in on the action. Makes it 33 to nothing with 7.01 to play in the first half with the extra point to come. McKee's extra point up. And it is good. So 34 nothing here at Carl Fell Stadium. Straight power, Jared. It's not very complicated at all. <laughs> but, you know, you don't need to be. Checking scores of other games. Groveport now leads Pickerington North 14-10 in the second quarter. Groveport's not a bad football no, team. No, they're not. Which, you know, that's that's the win for Lancaster that gave them the opportunity to go to the playoffs. Yes, and I, and I thought that win was pretty impressive that night when the Gales played. Yeah. Pickerington Central leads Central Crossing 21-0. It's Bishop Hartley over New Lax 21-7 in the second quarter. Sheridan leads Circleville 7-0 in the second quarter. It's Tri-Valley over Jonathan Alder 13-3 in the second. Harvest Prep leads Megs 27-0 in the first quarter. And Gahanna Lincoln leads Lancaster 14 to eight, also listed in the second quarter. Get a couple more here after this return on the kickoff. And a good job defensively for Bloom Carroll 
on the tackle is number 15. That's Stacy Diamond the third, the sophomore. He did a Good great coverage. job of keeping the runner inside the sideline. And you'll see watch here, this. watch him come down and contain to make sure he had to run back into right here when he changed direction. Watch him, Jared. What a great job. Yeah, really good. And then just stayed with it. Yes, and then now here comes your help. Yeah. Some other scores. It is uh, Burn Union trailing Shenandoah 19 to nothing in the second quarter. Fairfield Christian all over Bridgeport 21 to six in the second quarter. Well, we talked about Fairfield Christian at the end of the year, and you mm -hmm. know they they have some really good players. They do. Very well coached. Danny Blair, over a thousand yard yep. rusher this year. Noticed that he was the uh, Eagle Gazette Player of the Week. Yep. Had a big game last week in their Week 10 win over Millersport. I thought the quarterback was a good player. Uh, and he's the backup. Yeah. Yeah. And, and they have good receivers. Um, uh, just, just. They were impressive at the end of the year. It took a little while early to get going, but boy, they played well down yeah. the stretch. I believe they started 0-4, and, and then they finished up 5-5. Five and five. I think you're right. On second down and six, wow. That's just going nowhere. Leading the charge for Bloom Carroll that time. A couple of guys, 43, Tristan Britch, and again, Andrew Marshall. There's just no way. It, they can't get their guys on the perimeter. They do not have many uh, positive yardage plays, I don't think, tonight. No, and, you know, you're going against probably one of the better defenses in the state at this level, yeah. too. I mean, that, thanks a lot, you know. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. So at this point, uh, Marion, you know, when, when you're down by this many, 34 nothing. With 6.05 to go still in the first half. I mean, on the, during this time out, are you, are you basically just trying to keep your guys, uh, tell your guys to keep their heads and uh, keep fighting? Well, yes. Yeah. So, number one, yeah, you want, it, want them to stay in the game. You want them to stay engaged. And number two, you want them to just make sure that they don't beat themselves. Yeah. Just do, you know, kind of the old Bill Belichick, just do your job. Yeah. Don't worry about the score. Don't worry about, you know, what the guy behind you is doing or what the guy next to you is doing. Worry about the guy in front of you. You yeah. know, it, handle your block. And, you know, run run to your assignment. Uh, do what you need to do on the play. And that's really all you can do. And if you ask each man to do that, hopefully the execution comes and you're able to at least make some headway. Again, whether or not, you you know, you put a dent in the score, you at least want to, you know, uh, put some good film uh, on tape. Right. Um, and, and, do, and do what you can do as a team. Here's Scott out of the shotgun, single back. He's the only man. No, that's not Scott this time. I believe that is Jaden Douglas who lined up at quarterback. And not much there, so fourth down and nine coming up, and another punting situation for Beechcroft. Very easy for frustration to set in. We saw it on that kickoff return a little bit from Douglas when he slammed his helmet down, and that, that's one of the things that Coach Simmons, I'm sure, you know, telling his team, hey, you know, we got to keep our heads here and um, not let that frustration come in. Just play one play at a time, one play at a time. Yeah, it's part of the part of the process of teaching young players. Yeah. Back to receive the punt is Bishop. They've already had one block tonight. This one is pretty good one, gonna be taken. Oh, Bishop lost it, and I think Beechcroft might have recovered it. Yes, they did. He made a great effort after the hit. Yeah. He got down and pushed him and blocked him from the Bloom Carroll player from recovering. Trying to see the number. Was that number 11 for Beechcroft on the, on the recovery? Tyrell Russell, let's see. Watch here. You get the muff. Now watch his effort to push yeah, him out of the yeah. way. Yeah, that hey. was Russell. Yep. And then just fight for it. Hey, that's just old playground. Yeah. Push the guy out of the way so I can get the ball. Great effort. I think if you ask Broden Bishop, he's probably stepping away and letting that one bounce yeah. if, he, if he had that to do over. Because, you know, you saw as he tried to field it, it his hands were down around yes. his feet as he tried to catch it. It's just that judgment. And, you know, if you're going to take a chance, this would be the game to do sure. it. Sure. Oh, geez. Kind of a, I don't know if that was a busted player design run by the quarterback. I don't have a number six listed on my roster. I don't know, but he ran 20 yards, but they we have a no no yardage game. Yeah. They we'll have to. They strung that out. We'll have to listen to see what the PA announcer calls for number six. He's not listed on the roster that we were given. 
told in our ears by our director that uh, they're saying the last name is Logan for number six. He will stay in at quarterback and look to pass on second down and 10. Had plenty of time that time. Nice pass, and it's completed at the 25-yard line. Down inside the 10, still on his feet to the three-yard line. That was on number the reception. One, Roshan number one, Burns. Yeah, Roshan Burns. What a great job <laughs> by both those guys. Great throw, great catch. Watch Roshan Burns on this. Look, look at all the time he had. Wow, what a job by Roshan Burns. Just beat the secondary. Burns gets him down inside the five yard line. First and goal here for the Cougars. Gonna be a straight run by Logan. Man, he has taken down hard. That time, again, it's Britch on the stop. Man, he has made some hits along with Marshall tonight. And actually, he's feeling a little bit himself after that hit. Well, Jared, he, he plays really hard and he is coming off that right end hard. Yeah. Again, I want to go back and reiterate uh, just how special of a player <laughs> Roshan Burns is. I mean, this is a young man that he, he lost the majority of his right arm down below his elbow back when he was eight months old. He was hospitalized with complications uh, that, that led him to a heart surgery, needed heart surgery, uh, and then he had a blood clot, two blood clots in his, in his arm, and uh, they had to cut his arm off. There's a good look at him. Number one, they cut his arm off down below his elbow, and it's never stopped him. From eight months, he's always been an active uh, young man. His mom talked about how, you know, he's got brothers that played football, and, and he's never let it stop him. He said, I'm going to play football as well, and even even basketball. He's yeah. a point guard on the basketball team. And he also said that he's going to go out for track this yeah. year. He's never run track, and, and, you know, just kudos to him. What Absolutely. Tremendous, tremendous drive and courage. Yeah. And, and guys, I also got a chance actually to talk to uh, Roshan's grandparents uh, before the game. I was enjoying some of the, the wonderful concession food <laughs> uh, and ran into them and saw their shirts and said, I, you know, I got to tell you folks, you know, I am just so inspired uh, yeah. by your grandson. And they said, you know, the thing about him, we, we always told him he could do it. We never oh, absolutely. said there was anything that he couldn't do. If it was something as simple as tying his shoes, yeah. uh, they said, do it yourself. You can do it. Um, and it, it has certainly paid off. Boy, Marshall <laughs> is able to bring down in the backfield. That's number four, Jaden Douglas, and he's injured. He grabbed his heel immediately. Well, they already suffered a big loss to their quarterback, Aurelia Scott on their first possession of the game. And this time, this would be a big one as well. Jaden Douglas, the senior wide receiver. He's the one that we talked about it being the 300 meter hurdle champion yeah. last year in division one. Watch Marshall. Holy cow. Man, he's fast. He is. He can really run. Jared. Ooh, he might've just gotten yep. rolled on. Yep. Never like to see that. Oh, we've got this stoppage with uh, Douglas down. Let's go back real quick to talking about Roshan Burns. You know, he speaking of uh, inspiration, he uses uh, Shaquem Griffin um, as, as inspiration. Uh, and Griffin is one who also had his hand amputated when he was four years old, played college football at Central Florida, and then he played 46 games in the NFL before he just recently retired. And, you know, he uses – Burns uses him – as his motivation to say, hey, if he can do it, I can do it as well. And he says, I, I, hopefully there are kids out there who watch me and, and see that they can do it too. Yeah, I just love the attitude of no excuses. Right. Um, I'm going to do it, and I, and I can do this. I, I love that in players. Uh, but really, when you, know, you look at his handicap, uh, he, he doesn't allow it to be a handicap. Sure, right. And that's beautiful. Yeah. Hey guys, and I, I've just always been so, you know, in awe of players who can do that. I mean, it, it, this is a tough enough game to play with all of your faculties phys yeah. physically, you know. And when, when you have a, you know, as, as, as Shu said, a handicap like that, the ability to not just be out on the field and not just participate, but to play well. Yeah. I mean, that, that was an amazing catch that we just <laughs> yeah. saw the, uh, over there. You know, there's a lot of guys, you know. He with, was in with, traffic. Yeah, exactly. Caught in traffic, held onto the football as he went to the ground. He's been doing that all season. He's been doing his whole career. And as, just to finish. I thought I was, you know, when I was talking to his grandparents, that was the first thing she said. She said, well, actually, basketball is his best sport. Wow. And, and, you know, you should see him on the basketball court. <laughs> and I said, well, I certainly will we'll check him out, Mrs. Burns. I, again, just I can't say enough about the kid. I'm just so inspired by, you know, players that, you know, going back to even, you know, my days as a youth, Jim Abbott. 
you know, yeah, as a pitcher, yeah. if you guys remember that name. Sure do. It yeah. was just so cool to watch him, just what he had to do in his pitching motion. Right. Just, just incredible stories. On third down, here he is, Burns. Takes the reception. He's inside the 10, down inside the 5, and driven out of bounds right there. And how – what kind of timing is that? We just talked about him, and he makes another big positive play to get him back to within 5 yards of the goal line. It's fourth and goal from the 5. So we'll see what they do here. Well, I like that. Getting that ball into their hands quick. Sure. You know, if you have an advantage on the edge, get the ball there quick and, and allow them to make a play. Yep. So Logan, number six, again lining up at quarterback. Apologize, that's all we have right now is a last name not listed on our roster. Dropping back to pass, going to keep it himself, run it right up the middle. Still fighting, still fighting. He lost the football. It's taken right away from him. Look who it is. <laughs> Look at that. All the way, the other way, going 100 yards, is Broden Bishop yep. for the touchdown for the Bulldogs. He just made up for that muff. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> you're right. And another injured Cougar down on the field back at about the four-yard line. But let's see if we can see where he lost the football. I don't see it on the ground. I think, no, I think he Bishop just, just took it. it right away. Yeah, right there. Yeah. Just took it right away from him. And you saw the beanbag come in, and then it's just smooth sailing. There's nobody. I'm not even sure anybody knew he had it. Yeah, Broden's not even in full spr sprint right there. No. I don't know if the Beechcroft, uh, half the Beechcroft team even knew that the ball was taken away. Oh, you're right, Jared. I think most of them thought the player, the play was dead. And, yeah. and, and the player on the ground, unfortunately, again, we don't have his, his full name, Logan. That is uh, Logan? I, I, well, I, I, I don't know. It's, it, it, whatever, you know, it, if we know his name or not, um, on the ground here uh, from the sideline, you could hear him wailing audibly oh, wow. um, on the ground. So, again, just another devastating injury. Seems that he's in a lot of pain as well uh, here for the Beachcock Krugers. And, and, and I, I say this in all sincerity, you know, at, at what point, you know, if you're Coach Simmons, do you just say, you know what, L let's just, you know, you don't want to take a knee, but just, right. you know, you, you don't want to get any more of your players hurt. Right. Uh, the score's kind of getting out of hand. And and a lot of these guys, as, as, as we know, are, are two-sport athletes, three-sport athletes in some cases. You, you just hate to see, you know, another player go down um, and, and just hope that he's okay. Well, let's talk about that because that's been one of the – the rallying points for people who are against the expanded playoffs is when you get these lopsided matchups, when you get like 16s versus ones, and even all the way up to, you know, even what was it? Sure, you were telling me on the way over that, in, especially in Division One, you were looking at that from eight down to 16, there was what one winning record? Any team in Division One of the four regions that is has a seed nine through 16, there's only one team left out of the playoffs that has a winning record. Wow. None of those teams at that p below that eighth seed have a winning record. They're either 500 or many of them will have a l less than 500 record. So Our director, producer, Josh Messerly going to put up a graphic here. Now, here's this region, right. okay, that we're dealing with tonight. And you can see that this is a great region. You know, when I talked to Coach McKinney, we talked, I, he, you know, he said the top eight seeds could win this region. Yeah. I, I believe any of the top seven. I won't say eight. I won't go as far as eight. But I'm telling you, I've seen some of these teams already this year or know some of the personnel involved. Anybody in the top seven could win this yeah. that, that This is, this has got to be one of the most balanced. Oh, absolutely. Even I mean, five and five is the, the worst record in this one. Yes. But then you've got other regions where you've got, you know, one and nine, two and eight in the playoffs. Well, the problem is the state wants it to be the same for every division. Yeah. Okay. Extra point from McKee is up and good. Makes it 41 to nothing. Division two, I mean, division one has this. They have many regions who have – just barely more than 16 yeah. teams, Jared. So what you're doing is, 
you know, you're taking teams that have one nine two eight records yep. at the very bottom. And again, I told you this, and, and you understand. I, I don't want coaches or players to not get an opportunity to play. But right. at what point does it make sense? You know, there's things to decide there, and I, you know, I'll let the powers to be to decide that. But I, I, I don't know. You know, the coaches were all for having a 12 team region mm -hmm. where the first four teams got a bye, then you played it on out from there. Right. I, you know, I don't, I don't know, Jared. I don't know what the proper answer is because tonight every region ha is going to have eight games right. in Ohio. Now, how many regions are there in Ohio? 28. Yeah. Multiply that times eight. I mean, that's a lot of football. Right. Well, 224 playoff yeah. games are being played tonight. 70 of those games have at least one school with a losing record. Yeah. 70. That's a lot. Yes, it is. 20. Yes. Well, actually, there are 23 games. There's one tomorrow night. Okay. I happened to read that just that. So 223 first yeah, round games tonight. Yeah, but for technicality tonight, purposes. Yeah. But, yeah, I mean, I don't know. Uh, do you begrudge somebody because they've maybe had a bad season? Yeah. I, I don't know the answer. But I do know there's some things they need to consider. Right. Just what you were talking about with, is it going to be competitive? Right. Are we going to have players injured? I mean, we see a big difference here in the physicality. Right. And, and this is a team that's six and three. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Beechcroft, they won their league. Exactly. You know. So. So can you imagine some of those divisions where you've got ooh. a sixteen versus one? A, you know, a one and nine team going against an undefeated team. Well, I mean, I even look at like it could be scary to be honest with you. Yeah. Uh, Division seven region, what twenty seven? I think it is. Yes. You know, you have Hemlock Miller, Miller. going to Hannibal River. Yep. Which Hannibal. we saw last year. They're tremendously I mean, they, talented. They shut out a very good Burn Union team yes. last year. Yes. <laughs> it's. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what the answer is. And um, again, we're not. I mean, I'm the kids are going to play. You know, it's not the kids. I mean, but no. obviously they want to. You know, if you they'll told them, play. hey, we're going to play. 20 games. They're going to play 20 games. They'll play. You know? Yeah, they'll play. But, again, we're kind of seeing it tonight with this, the amount of injuries that we have seen. Well, look at the sideline numbers. Yeah. I mean, they just – there's nobody over there. I, I, I don't know. I, I You know, I just don't know. But Bloom's got 11 on the field and probably how many <laughs> over here? 30, 30 maybe? If Yeah, if, if not more. Yeah, 30 or 40 kids here. Cause then they've got some that are in street clothes with yeah. jerseys on who are probably injured guys, you know. On second Ooh. down and long – Getting in the backfield and making the sack is number 71. That's Kale Craner for I the Bulldogs. I guess we, we could have that discussion any time, you know, and we could, you know, get a lot of ideas and perceptions of that. So There's a look at the Beechcroft sideline. I mean, they came in, I believe, with just, just over 30 players total. Third down and 15 here for the Cougars. And that Ooh. pass is almost intercepted by number 25 for Bloom Carroll. That's Carter Cornelius. Yeah, he played that really well. <laughs> he was reading the quarterback. He made him pump, and then yeah. he went ahead and threw it anyway. Carter had a chance to get that one. Fourth down and 15 for Beechcroft. Clock stopped at a minute, 34 to go in the first half. 41 nothing. Bloom Carroll on top. After the punt, we'll tell you about our halftime band show that's going to be coming up. Back for Bloom Carroll once again is Broden Bishop. He has a touchdown tonight on the defensive side just a moment ago, and he fair catches this one. There you go. <laughs> just the last punt that he took, he tried to catch it down by his feet, and he muffed it. And it was uh, fumbled, and this time he fair catches it. Well, I believe special team coaches tell their players, if you have to catch it below your waist, yeah. don't try to catch it. Coming up in a minute and 29, we'll have the halftime band show. You're going to see the Bloom Carroll Bulldog Marching Band from the fair a couple weeks ago. Boy, what great weather we had for that. And they uh, put on a great show, so you're going to see that show. It'll be brought to you by Frank E. Smith Funeral Home, Crematory and Monuments, family owned and operated since 1889. Check them out at funeralhome.com. The Frank E. Smith Funeral Home, respect for tradition, regard for change. On first and 10, <laughs> here's Armin Trout. 
And while somebody had a hold of his jersey, he carries him for about four yards. That halftime band show will also be brought to you by Fairfield Federal. When it comes to our customers and our community, we go above and beyond to help. Personal or business banking, whatever you need, we take it seriously because we know you do too. The difference is clear. Fairfield Federal Savings and Loan specializes in banking that revolves around you. Member FDIC, equal housing lender. I'll tell you, if that fog gets any of that, you know, from, from the... <laughs> yeah. uh, the uh, smoke from the, the grill, grills, yeah. Gets any thicker over Marion, he's going to have indigestion. <laughs> I, I tell you guys, in Bloom Carroll, and I said this last time we did the game, I always come hungry. Every time, I always come hungry. And you leave hungry, too, from well, the smell all night. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, no. I, I, I get full. I get full. I, I get enough food <laughs> from, from, the, from the concession stand. Pre-game, sure. halftime, oh, post-game. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Clock rolls down inside of 30 seconds to go in the first half. Carroll picked up the first down there, and it looks like they may just let the time run yeah. out. I mean, what's or the maybe beginning? run one more play. Yeah. Play clock down to 15. Yeah, they got to run one more play. Santana Vong will hand it off to Armin Trout. Armin Trout coming near side and gets driven out of bounds. By number 11, that's Tyrell Russell. <laughs> they run He's played pretty more. well tonight defensively, Tyrell sure has. Sure has. Believe it or not, they have actually been very much more competitive here defensive in yeah. their defensive unit uh, at the line of scrimmage. Just much better. I mean, Bloom Carroll's so good up front and their backs, but, but Beechcroft has been much more active since that, you know, first quarter where they kind of just struggled totally. Bulldogs are just going to kneel on it here. And head to the locker room with a 41 to nothing lead in this Division Three, Region 11, first round playoff game. The Bulldogs all over Beechcroft, 41 nothing. We're going to take a timeout. We come back. We will have the halftime band show. You'll see the Bloom Carroll Bulldog marching band from their Fairfield County Fair performance that was uh, filmed a couple of weeks ago. Hope you enjoy it. We'll be back with the second half action coming up on the high school football game of the week. Stay with us. Hi, I am Carrie Woody with United Way of Fairfield County. Our mission is to utilize all resources to achieve the greatest impact on our local needs. And this can only be accomplished by local support and generous donations from businesses like Buckeye Toyota through their Buckeye Cares program. This month, Buckeye Toyota will make a donation to the United Way with every vehicle sold. From all of us at United Way, we say thank you, Buckeye Toyota, for once again offering your support. Hi, I'm Carol Whittington, and I would like to invite you to stop by Personal Touch Party Rentals and Events, located at 1540 Hubbard Drive in Lancaster. We are a small family-owned business and have been servicing the Central Ohio and Hawking Hills area since 2003. Graduations with a personal touch, weddings with a personal touch, corporate events with a personal touch. Please call us today for all your party rental needs, 740-689-6991. Bay Food Market is Fairfield County's source for high-quality, locally-sourced meats. The meat case is always full of quality, fresh beef, pork, gourmet burgers, and gourmet broths for you and your family to enjoy. Bay Food Market cures and smokes their own hams, bacon, and sausage. Visit Bay Food Market at the corner of Maple and Walnut Streets in Lancaster and discover the Bay Food Market difference. Open daily, 8 a.m. to 6 p.m., closed Thursday and Sunday. Bay Food Market, proudly serving Fairfield County families for more than 90 years. Greetings from Fairfield DD. We are excited to share the joys of the fall season with you. As we move into cooler weather, we hope to see you at Football Friday Nights and the County Fair. As you enjoy the season of changing colors, we also want to remind you of the change we hope to see. We pursue a vibrant community where everyone leads a fulfilling life and everyone makes meaningful contributions. Don't forget to stop by our social purpose enterprise, Art and Clay on Main and Square 7 Coffee House, to paint a new piece for your table this season or enjoy a handcrafted fall beverage.
walked down the aisle and promised happily ever after. Sometimes happily ever after means ending a relationship. We know the conversations are not easy. Deciding what's best for you, your children, and your next steps takes work and communication. At Dagger Law, we know there are no monsters in a divorce, only people trying to find their way. Local, trusted, experienced. Dagger Law. Hi, my name's Josh Lazier with the Lancaster Fire Department, here to talk to you about Narcan. Narcan is the light in the darkness of the opioid epidemic. It's a medication designed to rapidly reverse opioid overdoses. It can very quickly restore normal respirations to a person whose breathing has slowed or stopped as a result of overdosing with heroin or prescription opioid pain medications. It can be carried by police, EMTs, firefighters, even family members. While Narcan stops the effects of an overdose, it does not stop addiction and is not a cure. If there are opioids in your home, Narcan should be there too. Narcan is considered to be a very safe drug and can save lives. And in Ohio, it's available without a prescription. Your life matters and we're here to help because you matter. This message is brought to you by the Fairfield County Adam H. Board. The Frankie Smith Funeral Home and Crematory in Lancaster and the Johnson Smith Funeral Home in Baltimore have a long and wonderful history of serving our community. Feel free to give us a call at 740-653-0652. Stop in and see us at either of our two locations, 405 North Columbus Street in Lancaster and 207 South Main Street in Baltimore. Respect for tradition, regard for change. I want a doctor who listens to me. From primary care to specialty medicine, we put your needs first by treating you like a person, not a number. Our primary care team will help you identify your health care needs and set goals for success, regardless of where you are in your wellness journey. We care for patients of all ages, with offices that are close to you. Whatever you're searching for, you can find it at Fairfield Medical Center. How much can you afford to spend on a home? That's a good question. I'm Desi DeJohn, Assistant Vice President and Mortgage Loan Officer at the Savings Bank in Lancaster. It's important to know how much you can afford before you contact a real estate agent. Factors such as income, credit score, debt, and down payment can help determine how much a bank can lend you to buy a home. Getting pre-qualified is the best way to find out how much you can afford to spend on a home. You can apply to pre-qualify online anytime at the thesavingsbankohio.bank.
Swing into the carriage company and check out our sweet deals. If you're looking for the best selection of clean, quality used vehicles, look no further than the carriage company. 
you'll feel secure with your purchase, knowing all vehicles undergo an extensive safety and service check prior to the sale. And all vehicles can be viewed online at carriagecompany.com. The Carriage Company, located at 1031 North Memorial Drive in Lancaster. So wait! IVP Sports presents the Buffalo Wild Wings High School Football Game of the Week. Brought to you by Buckeye Toyota, Bay Food Market, Fairfield County Adam H., The Savings Bank, Sheridan Funeral Home, Fairfield Federal, Fairfield DD, The Frankie Smith Funeral Home, The Edwards Insurance Agency, Dagger Law, The Carriage Company, Personal Touch Party Rentals, North Body Shop, Fairfield Medical Center, and Buckeye Lake Marina. Welcome back to Carl Fell Stadium here at Bloom Carroll High School. Hope you enjoyed the Halftime band performance by Bloom Carroll Marching Bulldogs. In fact, you've got a little double dose of them. You got to see the uh, the fair show, and then you got to see them back live here on the field at Carl Fell Stadium. And boy, what a great performance they put on uh, tonight! Just uh, 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 two weeks in a row, we've seen some very good <laughs> good marching bands, and uh, they'll be in action tomorrow in the o -E -O -M -E -A State Marching Band Finals. So we wish them the best of luck. And the band that you did not get to see, Beechcroft's band, uh, went on right before Bloom Carrolls. And I tell you what, they are. They're entertaining. Uh, we had two very, very good bands uh, entertaining tonight, and I know the fans uh, gave them a, a nice uh, round of applause of appreciation. And it, it, you mention it all the time, Shu. On a Friday night uh, in Ohio, it's it's not just a football game; it's a community event. Yep, and it, it certainly is. And then you have all the kids involved in this extracurricular things going on. And, yeah. You know, I, I I took a little walk just to stretch my legs over there kids everywhere uh -huh. interacting uh, involved in something one way or the other you Super. know i saw i saw a stadium uh, uh, i don't know where it was but it, it was a picture on social media of a of a school i'm not even sure if it was in ohio but wherever it was they put a brand new field in with a turf field and down beyond the goal post um like, like before you get to the track was a mini turf field and, the, and there were little kids playing on it the entire <laughs> game. That's awesome. Yeah, I mean, you, you know, when you go to a game as a kid, you're off oh. somewhere finding an open field and playing. You know, it's like you're under the lights as well. I look across the way. I mean, we see kids yeah. throwing football. And it, like you said, it's a community event uh, for everyone. Bloom Carroll leads here 41 nothing. They take the opening kickoff of the second half and get great field position all the way up to the 40-yard line. And we'll check some. Halftime scores of other games around the area. Groveport Madison leads Pickering to North 14-13 at halftime. It's Bishop Hartley over New Lexington 27-7 in the third quarter. Tri-Valley leads Jonathan Alder 23-3 in the third quarter. It's River over Miller. We tell you that score, uh, that score is 43-6. We tell you that one because if Fairfield Christian, should they go on to win, which it looks like they will, they will be playing River. It's Sheridan uh, leading Circleville 14-0. Uh, Pickerington Central leads Central Crossing 21 nothing at the half. Harvest Prep all over Megs 41 nothing at, at the half. Uh, Gahanna Lincoln leads Lancaster 28 8 in the third quarter. It is Bridgeport uh, trailing Fairfield Christian 35 to 12 at halftime. Fairfield Christian and then another halftime score. Burn Union trails Shenandoah 32 to nothing at halftime or that one in the third quarter. We've got a got some halftime stats we can look at here yeah. for this uh, this contest. Yeah, Cole Sherman just made a good run right there, Jared. Another back. Yeah, great great defense. I mean, when you see that negative, you know, in the, yeah. in the rushing yards column for Beechcroft, that just <laughs> you know that's that's just very impressive. Right. Regardless of whatever, if you hold somebody to negative yardage rushing, that's outstanding. And if you're just joining us, and you see. Fair, uh, Bloom Carroll has 41 points, but only 100, what was that, 136 total yards. Well, the majority of their drives have started deep in Beechcroft territory, and they've scored on a punt block, yes. and they scored on a 100-yard, 99-yard uh, uh, fumble. fumble return. Yeah, So. Yeah. well, and they also set them up, in, like you said, inside the yeah. 20 yeah. twice is almost like on the platter. Right. So the yardage itself isn't that significant, but... 
but they're just a domination here. And they're going to run the ball. Look at Cole Sherman now right here running yep. the football. He's got two good runs right away. We will have a running clock here in this second half as long as the score stays over 30 points. Or the, the deficit uh, for Beechcroft stays at 30 or more. Dan Thanavong again hands off to Sherman. Sherman around that right tackle. And another good run for Cole Sherman. He runs hard. Five foot six hundred and sixty-five pound senior. Gives him another first down. Certainly hope that those injuries that we saw for Beechcroft uh, in the first half, we certainly hope that those guys are going to be all right. Uh, they looked like they were in some pretty bad pain, all three of them. Took some big hits. First and 10 for Bloom Carroll. Already inside the 30-yard line of Beechcroft. Here's Sherman again. And this time going to be brought down at the 25. A little pancake block over here on the left. There's uh, a few of those injuries over there on the far side. That's, yeah, that's not a, a shame. Not a good look with the with the crutches. That's And that one is, uh, that's, that's Jaden Douglas, their state champ hurdler, 300-meter hurdler. We saw him go down a little bit later in that first half. You know, Jared, as I, I mentioned that block over there, I look at it, that's Jaden Ball. Interesting stat that I, I got from um, Bloom Carroll this year. Jaden Ball, coming into tonight's game, had 116 pancake blocks. Wow. 116 Jeez. in a 10 game season. Now, he is the MSL Buckeye Lineman of the Year. And congratulations to Andrew Marshall. He is the MSL Buckeye Back of the wow. Year. So they had the Lineman of the Year and the Back of the Year, and it certainly has shown tonight. Yeah. Jaden Ball, six foot four, 280 pound junior. They'll get him back next year. And we've got a whistle and flags. Movement early on Beechcroft. Yeah, I mean, 116 pancake blocks. Come on. I mean, how much syrup is that going to take <laughs> to get that going, you know? <laughs> wow. wonder if they do any kind of pancake club here, maybe on Saturday mornings for those linemen that had yeah. the pan pancake blocks the night before, give them some pancake breakfast. Sounds good. Sounds like an idea, buddy. Yeah, make a yeah. shirt, yeah. the pancake club. That'd be a good idea. Coach McKinney, call me up. We'll, we, we'll get yeah. that set up. <laughs> <laughs> In fact, I believe Fisher Catholic, which is where Mc Coach McKinney graduated yeah. from, I believe they had that at one time, the Pancake Club. I, I think you are correct. Wow, look at that getting in there. Once again, that's number 20 for Beechcroft. That's Deshaun Henderson. He has uh, played some really good defense. He's had a really good ball game for the Cougars. Watch here. Watch him come through. Untouched. He just sneaks through there. Yeah, he's coming from his, you know, safety slash linebacker position yeah. there. Well, I mean, how many passes has Carroll thrown tonight? None. Okay, so, I mean, at some point, you know, players got to figure that right. out too. Right, right. So, going to be a field goal attempt. It's going to be 40 yards on the kick it is Tyler Rapp. And it is up, and oh, wow. it is good. No, wide left. He had the distance. He sure did. But wide left. Tyler Rapp, the five foot 970 pound senior. But then they also have, uh, who kicks off, McKee, who boots him yeah. to the end zone. They've got yeah. a couple weapons. Well, McKee's kicked all the extra points, correct? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Well, Marion, that one looked like it had plenty of distance. That yeah, really did. Not only did it look like it when he, he hit it. I mean, he really sounded like he hit it right. solid. You can kind of hear it up in the booth, I'm sure, even where you guys were, but just uh, sailed left on him at the yep. end there. Screen pass out once again. That is Roshan Burns on the reception. Just nowhere to go. Just I, swarmed. Well, I'll tell you what. Marshall chases things down. Yes, I, I'm telling you what. I, I get a kick out of watching him. I yeah. Just – just from there, and if people watch this game on replay stuff, just check number 11. Yeah. He's worth he's worth the, the uh, price of admission. 
his effort defensively. Watch him here. He got blocked. Okay, now here he comes. He's chasing him down from here. Whoops. <laughs> Pick up, chase him back in, get involved. Wow. Here's a long pass downfield. It's complete across the 50 and down to near the 40-yard line on the reception. That is the guy that's been playing uh, great defense, Deshaun Henderson for the Cougars. Yeah, they've, they've, they've hurt the uh, Bulldogs twice now in the center of the field. Back in at quarterback is Nehemiah Scott, the freshman for the Cougars. Scott takes the high snap, looking to pass over the middle. It's tipped and intercepted by the Bulldogs. Into the hands of Carter Cornelius. Cornelius down the near sideline, getting a block out there, and Cornelius gets all the way down to the 21-yard line. What a great job by Carter. He's had a nice game tonight also, Jared. Here's the Dagger Law replay. That one's set up by 21, yep. Broden Bishop, who tipped it. Pass was intended for Deshaun Henderson. And a good return on the interception by Bishop. Or, I'm sorry, by Cornelius. Bishop tipped it. So first and 10 for the Bulldogs. Stan Thanavong has his running back. That is, once again, Sherman to his right. Cole Sherman. He'll get the handoff and be met immediately. 54, Elijah yeah. Ocheri Bucky made the initial hit. Yeah, really, really blew the thing up. He did. Clock rolls down to 3.20 and counting here in the third quarter. Glad to have you along on this week number 11. Division three, region 11, first round playoff game. Bulldogs easily in control of this one. Looking like they may be making a trip to Dresden, Tri-Valley next week somebody someplace you are very familiar with you yeah I how many I, years did you spend as the uh well, basketball coach there and teaching that I, I taught 13 years in the district nice. so and um got a lot of friends still there and it was a great experience um best decisions i ever made i, I loved um working for and teaching at lancaster city schools is great and uh but it, it was it was just a, a time that was appropriate and it worked out well and i had a lot of fun and still have a lot of a lot of people there that are very special to me. Mm -hmm. So if that is, in fact, uh, where the Bulldogs end up and we get a chance to go there, that'll be that'll be a lot of fun. Oh. A little uh, reunion for you. Yeah, oh, a big reunion. And um, uh, like I said, <laughs> it's just, you know, I, I, I'm a very fortunate person in a lot of ways. I tell people that all the time, that uh, I, I got to do exactly what I wanted to do for a career. Yeah. Uh, and not everybody gets to do that. Yep. And I got to do it in two places that I truly, truly have a soft spot for a lot of the people involved yeah. there. Because the people are what make it so good. Fourth down and one for Bloom Carroll. Back on to try a field goal as Tyler Rapp. This one will be from 30 yards. And <laughs> offsides. Just a little bit. And Rapp is like, come on, man, that's going to give us a first down. I wanted <laughs> to kick it. <laughs> It can decline. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> well, and, and truthfully, you never know. That could come down to a game could come down to a field goal. Oh, you know, a uh, kicker is a valuable tool. Yeah. Teams that have good programs usually have a good kicker. Right. If not from long distance, from but about definitely accurate, yep. especially extra points, things of that nature. Schools that uh, that have soccer that allow those mm -hmm. soccer players to also cross over and kick, boy, that that's a weapon. It sure is. Uh, you know, I've told people a lot of times if I had ever be a football coach, one of the things I would definitely do is, is I would find out, try to find somebody who can kick yep. the football accurately. So first and goal for the Bulldogs at about the nine yard line. Plants. There's a handoff, plants into the end zone, touchdown. 
He runs hard. All these backs do. Well, they do. Hard. Yeah, they, they do. They have their different uh, positives to them that they offer from Armand Trout to Marshall, and then you watch Plants right here. He's just power. You know, we talked about uh, Chase in the first half. He, he's just been very impactful here in the program for – Several years. Yeah. And Marion, you could have driven a, a Mack truck through that hole. That, that offensive line opened up a, a nice big hole there. Yeah, absolutely could have. I mean, we don't say enough about this offensive line. You know, you, you talked about the size earlier, both you guys did, uh, of how big they are, how, how they're able to dominate. Um, at the line of scrimmage, at the point of attack, and really just push people around. A lot of these runs you see, particularly Armatrot, he's not being touched until 10, 11 <laughs> yeah. you know, yards down the field, not taking anything away from him right. again because we talked about Armatrot's vision uh, to be able to uh, you know, see those different uh, holes as they develop. But, again, the offensive line, um, you know, the, um, uh, the running backs, you know, the, the stable that they continue to bring, uh, and then the receivers that haven't got a whole lot of work tonight, but they've yeah. got playmakers out wide too. Right. You know, I think it's important also that we point out that, you know, we always talk about size on the line, but it's, it's about more than that. I mean, they've, there's a lot of skill that those guys have to have, and you saw it right there on that run, the, the way they're, they're blocking their guy in certain directions. And so it's not just about size. It's about skill. It's about footwork. It's about speed. And this Bloom Carroll line is getting it done. Well, I think a lot of people look at, you know, too, are they, what's their mobility? What's their footwork? You know, how quick can they be off the ball? Yeah. Not just that they're big, um, but Bloom Carroll. Bloom Carroll at Carl Fell Stadium and taking a moment to, of silence as uh, this community lost a, a young member of the, of the family, uh, Bloom Carroll community, uh, to a motorcycle accident uh, this past week. And so they took a moment to uh, honor him in a moment of silence. Yeah, he was a 2021 graduate. Wow. So how, you know, the kids here in this community this size, sure. you know, you're going to have uh, a lot of communication and, and memories of uh, having dealt with those things and it's not easy um it was nice that they uh brought that up and yeah. had that you know moment i saw it in the paper i think just a day or so ago and i yeah. went doggone yep you know value the days i mean you've heard me say that before that, shoot, that's one of my <laughs> my favorite things is when i get uh, emails from you i know we tease you all the time because you don't text <laughs> it's an email. You know, Gavin even today <laughs> said, Dad, did, did, Shu tech, did Shu email you to see what time we were leaving? <laughs> but anyway, the, one of my favorite things is getting an email from you, and the bottom always says, enjoy the days. I'm telling you, you just they're not guaranteed, yeah. and we're all very blessed. You know, and I, you know, I, I know Marion and yourself, and, and, and I feel that way, and I think everybody needs to have a day where you feel like that. Yeah, and, absolutely. Uh, just value it. I want to say thanks to our Interface Video Productions crew tonight uh, down on the truck. Josh Messerly, who's uh, pushing all the buttons tonight, and our producer-director, along with Josh, is Donnie Ziegfeld and Shane Messina. On cameras tonight, Jason Roush, uh, Jim Spires, Tom Russo. Am I missing anybody, uh, Josh? Do we have, uh, we have a statistician tonight? Did I miss? So I got everybody. I got everybody tonight. So uh, we have best crew in the business, and uh, they give up their their. Lots of nights uh, to come out and, and do this, and it's all for all for the kids. We like to highlight high school athletes, and this is a nice uh, run right here by a high school athlete, number 11. That's uh, Tyrell Russell. Nice return for Beechcroft. Well, what I like, Tyrell, he just turned it on and went straight ahead. Yeah. You know, no stopping, no pausing. Yep. Let's go. And, you know, and for Coach Simmons, that's something you want to see as well is, you know, these kids not giving up. I mean, they're down 48 to nothing. 11:22 um, on a running clock here in the fourth quarter, and still playing hard out there. That's all they know, really. Yep. If you if you if you practice the proper way and you work with kids the proper way, that's that's all they know, Jared. Yeah. Looks like back in at quarterback for Beechcroft is Logan, number six, I believe. 
Or no, that is still the freshman. Nope, sorry, number 13 now, Jameer Radford, another freshman. So they've had Nehemiah Scott in there, and now Jameer Radford, which is a guy that uh, Coach Simmons was very excited about coming into the season, even a freshman. They felt like he was going to be a weapon uh, out on the wide receiver spot. Yeah, it's just been tough since, you know, it lost the quarterback. Yeah. First series. Gosh. Yep. Big enough challenge as it is. Second and ten. Screen pass out once again. That is Roshan Burns. Great Made the tackle. catch, but just couldn't get anywhere from there. On the stop, that's Colin Willett. Watch right here. Willett coming up and making this tackle. Oh, yeah, just a great read and an excellent tackle. Look where he comes from. Looks like the left linebacker spot, left middle. Wow. Yep, outstanding. So it brings up a third down and 10 for the Cougars. Clock down to 9.45 and counting here in the fourth. Bradford back to pass. Nope, now it is Scott back in there. Gets his man, but he kind of goes backwards there. <laughs> that is Malachi Tarver. Well, Carroll's pursuit to the football is as good as you're going to see. Yeah. I'll tell you right now, defensively, they are, not only do they have talented players, they are, they are really, really well coached. Yep. So the Cougars are be forced to punt. Doing the punting is Deshaun Henderson. We've seen him do a little bit of everything tonight for this Beechcroft football team. Now, now he's counting personnel to make sure they got the right amount. Yeah. Back for Bloom Carroll. He has number 21. That's Broden Bishop. And we have a timeout on the field. Uh, Beechcroft calls one. And let's say thanks to tonight's second-half scoreboard sponsor, Buckeye Lake Marina. If you're looking for a new boat, a great pre-owned watercraft, or a place to get parts for your boat, Buckeye Lake Marina has it all. More information can be found at BuckeyeLakeMarina.com. And we have a timeout on the field. Our timeout sponsor tonight, Carriage Company, located at 1031 North Memorial Drive in Lancaster. Learn more at CarriageCompany.com. That's a business right there that's been on with us for many years, like some of these uh, have been, and we certainly yes. thank them for making all this possible. And they, uh, you know, they, they don't do it for anything other than doing it for the kids. No, it's, you know. it's great sponsorship yep. and um, very much appreciated by us, I know. Checking some scores. Groveport Madison still leads Pickerington North 14-13. That score has not been updated. It's still listed in third quarter. He just picked Central over Central Crossing 35 to nothing in the third quarter. Sheridan leads Circleville 14 to nothing in the fourth quarter. That one's closer than I, than I expected. Yeah. Uh, Bishop Hartley all over New Lax, 34-7 in the third quarter. Here's a, some flags coming in. I believe they're going to get, it's going to be a pass interference on Bloom Carroll. Yeah, I think so. Intended receiver was Roshan Burns. Hartley leads New Lax 34-7. It's Tri-Valley over Jonathan Alder, 23-3 in the fourth quarter. Harvest Prep leads Megs 41-0 at halftime. Also at half, River over Miller 43-6. In the third quarter, Gahanna Lincoln all over Lancaster 35-8. Fairfield Christian just dominating Bridgeport 42-12. And Shenandoah doing the same to Burn Union 38-0 in the third quarter. So we are looking like we will have Bloom Carroll moving on from our area as well as Fairfield Christian. And Boy, Marion, how many times can we say the name Andrew Marshall tonight? <laughs> that was a heck of a hit. Uh, yeah, if you ask him, I'm, going to, I'm sure he'll tell you not enough. Uh, <laughs> you know, that, that's a young man that uh, I've been so impressed with his motor. Yeah. Uh, you know, it doesn't matter if they're down by 40, they're up by 40. He's just that has that intensity that he's going to continue to just go hard and try to make every play that he can. And he's going to make sure when you, when you get tackled yeah, by Andrew yeah. Marshall, you're going to feel it. You will definitely feel it. Quarterback swarmed under there, right at the line of scrimmage, gonna bring up a third down and 10. That was Nehemiah Scott. Tackle that time made by Jet Jones for the Bulldogs. Third 
Third down and 10. Running fourth quarter clock here down near seven minutes. We'll get our players of the game momentarily. It's, when it's a running clock, it goes quick. The second half has flown by. Here's a long pass downfield and almost intercepted. Intended receiver was Roshan Burns. Let's go ahead and get our players of the game. Let's do the uh, Beechcroft player of the game first. Brought to you by Bay Food Market. They've been serving Fairfield County for more than 90 years. Located at the corner of Maple and Walnut Streets in Lancaster, Bay Food Market provides a community with the highest quality meats. Stop in and discover the Bay Food Market difference. Well, I think for the Cougars, we got we got to go with number 20, Deshaun Henderson. Yeah. Uh, you know, you know, Jared, 5'10", 135-pound senior. He's uh, he's actually had a very good ball game tonight. Yeah, he has, especially defensively. I mean, yes. He's made some really good tackles. And he's done some things offensively as well. Oh, wow. There's a big hit on the intended receiver who was Jerome Killebrew. He was upended. I believe Chase plants on the tackle. Certainly hope Killebrew is all right. That was a nasty sure look. Chase? Watch this. Well. Yeah, that was 19. Yeah. They've already, uh, Beechcroft has already suffered several injuries tonight. And this time it is Jerome Killebrew who is down on the field. And while they attend to him, let's get to our Bloom Carroll player of the game brought to you by the Edwards Insurance Agency specializing in providing personalized insurance coverage that meets the needs of our individual clients. Contact Todd or Dale Edwards today. Well, I, I think they have a lot of impact players. You know, yeah. we've talked about that, but there's nobody that impacts the game more than Andrew Marshall, in my opinion. Six foot three, 225 pound, uh, committed to play at Kent State, and, and he is just all over the place. High motor. Oh, you know, <laughs> you know, Marion brought that up, and that, that's the thing. I mean, he is ready to go from play there one. There he is. Yeah, yeah, good for him. <laughs> Big grin. Hey, when you play that hard, and he, you can tell he loves to play. Congratulations, Andrew Marshall, yep. the Bloom Carroll player of the game. As his team going to be moving on to week number 12, the second round of the playoffs. Looking like they will most likely be going to Dresden, Tri-Valley, Got to like this out of uh, Coach McKinney. We, we saw this at the end of the first half as well. They're, they're running that play clock down as far as they can get. Yeah. Just try to, you know, get this one over with. Not try to run the score up or do anything they don't need to do. Well, no, I mean, there's nothing profitable by doing that. Right. You know, nothing gained. There's our Beechcroft player of the game. That's Deshaun Henderson. He's had a nice game, a nice end to his senior season. Even in a, in a loss, you can find the positives, and that young man will certainly have some that he can look back at. Second down and 12 for the Bulldogs. Clock down to five and a half minutes to play. Coming up at the conclusion of this one, we will, Marion will attempt to get uh, Coach McKinney for some comments. Short gain on the play, maybe one, third down and 10, 11 coming up. Big weekend too in Ohio. Uh, you know, I know Marion's gonna be glued, you know, tomorrow yeah. at noon. I think uh, the Buckeyes are gonna have their biggest challenge of the year heading over there to Pennsylvania. And then of course, Monday night, th th that'll be uh, for all you big Brownie fans, you know, <laughs> hosting the Bengals up there without well, their best receiver. Yeah, Jamar Chase, man, that's that's a big loss. Yeah. Every Marion, year. how do you think that's gonna impact Joe Burrow and the Bengals? Well, I, I'll tell you guys, I think um, as we see the, the end of the play there, gang tackle there. But yeah, I, I think that uh, it, it certainly will have a, an impact. Burrow has been, you know, really found his rhythm, I guess, so to speak, in the passing game. The Bengals have been really lighting it up as of late, but yeah. you lose Chase, you know, a player like that. But also the Browns are down Denzel Ward. Ward he'll be out with another uh, yeah. concussion there. 
their star cornerback there. So, uh, you know, the, for the Browns, and I, I've been a tortured Browns fan this season, <laughs> let me tell you. <laughs> so we're, we're just looking for anything, just trying to put it together. And this is kind of the, the last raw, if you will, the, the Browns, if they're going to get their season going, they've got to start on Monday night. I heard a who day in my ears, Marion. <laughs> yeah, that's messily. I'm surprised he hasn't been giving me more, more flack, you know, so far. Uh, because he certainly has plenty of ammunition. Uh, oh, my. Yeah. I just stir the pot. You know, I, I, honestly, I'll watch it for entertainment. Yeah. It, it, it's better better for your nerves. Shoot, just stay stay out of the sidelines, especially being a Browns fan. I yeah, think. I'm sure. Yeah. I'm sure. I got family. That, <laughs> they, they live and breathe it. Yeah. And, and you just can't quit them, you know. That's the yeah. problem. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but so many uh, Sundays, I've been so angry and just sworn them off. And uh, the next Monday, I'm I'm looking up every stat I can and worried about the next week. So that's great. That's great stuff. I'm looking forward to tomorrow's college football day. I I think the games are tremendous again that we have yeah. every weekend. It just yep. you know it's just fun. And of course, we've got round ball getting ready to start up. Uh, the boys yep. uh, started practices tonight. Uh, the first day of. High school boys basketball in the state of Ohio. Girls started this past um, week on Monday. Well, actually, I think they started last Friday or Saturday. Yeah. They always start a week early. And, of course, Bloom Carroll, again, looking to continue some success. Have a new coach this year. Actually, my cousin, Ryan Davis, coming over from Chesapeake uh, to coach here at Bloom Carroll. Small world. He's a yeah. Alexander High School graduate. Had a lot of success over at Chesapeake. Yes. So we'll see what... Uh, he can do here at Bloom Carroll. Interesting. 321 to play here in the ball game at Carl Fell Stadium as the Bulldogs easily in control of this one 48 to nothing over Beechcroft. And we will be hopefully on the road again next week. Uh, Options are a little bit limited as it looks like we're going to have just two teams left in our area. There's a completed pass yeah. across the middle. That's, again, Roshan Burns. I tell you what, we, we gave the player of the game to Deshaun Anderson. It could have been a, a double. I mean, we could yeah. have. Roshan's had a heck of a game. He sure has. Hey, guys, I, I'm sitting here on silent. That, that is an impressive catch. You're turning <laughs> your, your back hips and, again, just the way he does that. It's yeah. just so cool. Here he is again. Completed at the 40 yard line and it's just turning those feet, trying to get every single yard he can. Great job by Roshan. I tell you, every pass he's caught has been at least 20, 20 or more yards. He's got to be up near 100 yards receiving. First and 10 for Beechcroft. Pass down the middle of the field. Nice defense that time by number eight for the Bulldogs. That is Seth Morales. Well, every completion that Beechcroft has had where they've been successful, Jared, has been the middle of the field. Yeah. And it looked like he was going to hit Henderson in stride there, but Morales just did a nice job getting that right hand in there and swatting it away. On second and 10, there's a big hit. Jerome Killebrew, good to see him back in the game. He went out earlier after took a nasty hit and upended him, but he's back in and hard run there for a few yards. Shoe Tri Valley up on Jonathan Alder, 30 to three in the fourth quarter. So it's looking pretty evident that Bloom Carroll gonna be heading to Tri Valley next week. Well, it's gonna be a battle. Yeah. I tell you right now, uh, Obviously, Bloom Carroll is as impressive as anybody I've seen this yeah. year. And, and uh, I saw the Scotties earlier in the year, too. They're very doggone good. When you compare the two leagues, of course, Bloom Carroll in the Mid-State League Buckeye, and uh, you've got Tri-Valley in the MVL Big School Division. What, how, would you, how would you compare the two? Yeah, it's similar. There's years where the league itself, the big division, you know, is similar to what it is, the Buckeye. Yeah. It's probably similar, but there's years where maybe the MSL has more depth, uh, you know, as far as teams are yeah. uh, than the MVL. But, I mean, when you throw Sheridan, try about, of course, John Glenn's had really good teams now. They're down this year a little bit, and Bloom Carroll, I think, put it on them earlier in the year this year. 
but you've had them and John Glenn. Um, I think who else is in that division? Philo's in the playoffs this weekend. Um, so it, it's very similar. I mean, Logan Elm's playing tonight. Yeah, yeah. You know, they got a really nice ball club. Um, it's hard to say, but when you're at the top of those divisions, like Sheridan and Tri-Valley are almost always at the top, right. as Bloom Carroll is always at the top, right. those teams are all good. That's true. They're used to winning. Year in, year out. Yeah, they're used to winning. They yeah. develop programs. They have good players, and they coach the players really well. Yeah. Passes incomplete, intended for Jerome Killebrew. And we are under a minute to play here in this one at Carl Fell Stadium. Well, Fourth we end up doing Beach that Cross. game. It'll be interesting to me to talk to the coaches to find out wh what their view is. Yeah. And you know, I've seen them both independently myself and just, you know, get the expert advice from the coaches and see what they think. Right. And Shu, you, were, you and I were talking uh, – as clock, the clock winds down here, you and I were talking coming in, what is the policy on trading film for, for playoff games? Well, basically what they ask you to do is to, you get to select three of the other person's films. Any three. Any three from the season. Okay. So you can kind of see what teams kind of play the way you do or yeah. you want to play, see, check some of their tougher games where maybe you might catch a little more, and they get three of yours. Now, you can send people out and scout all you want. Yeah. Um, <coughs> Uh, uh, but really, that's really what you're supposed to do professionally is trade three films of choice and give the opponent an opportunity. So. Well, the Bulldogs victorious tonight in the first round of the playoffs, 48 to nothing over Beechcroft. You see them heading across the field to shake hands, and Marion going to attempt to get Coach McKinney and a word with him. And while, he, uh, while we wait on that, I'll go over some – Scores around the area really quickly. 16-14 pick north over Groveport in the fourth quarter. It is Sheridan over Circleville, 26-0 in the fourth quarter. Bishop Hartley leads New Lex 41-7 or 41 to seven in the fourth. Tri-Valley over Jonathan Alder, 30-10 in the fourth quarter. It's Harvest Prep over Meg's. Last check was 41-0. River over Miller, 49-6. Pick Central over Central Crossing, 35-0. Gahanna Lincoln over Lancaster, 49-8 in the fourth quarter. It is Fairfield Christian all over Bridgeport, 42 to 18 in the fourth. And Shenandoah leads Burn Union 38 to nothing in the fourth quarter. And here at Bloom Carroll, the Bulldogs victorious tonight, 48 to nothing. And down on the field, Marion Royster has uh, Coach McKinney uh, standing by looking uh, to uh, give us some comments about tonight's game. Let's go on down to Marion. Yeah, th thanks, Jared. Here with uh, Coach Jeremy McKinney. Coach, again, great game tonight. Uh, excellent performance by the guys. Uh, particularly, you know, on the defensive side of the football, uh, you know, obviously pitching a shutout, made some incredible plays, had the long touchdown run. Uh, and then, then you had on special teams, uh, you know, a block and able to make some plays there. Um, what, what were some of your thoughts about uh, the way you played defense uh, tonight? We wanted to play hard. Um, we came out and we thought we saw some things on film that thought we might be able to get some of that punt. So that, that was that one. Um, we want to run the football. I mean, we preach that all the time. Like, we're, we're trying to get to the football. And uh, that, that's what we're doing tonight. And then offensively, you know, you guys were about as efficient as you, as you come. You are able to, you know, put a lot of points on the board and didn't even have to attempt to pass. So that's always good. And, and the physical nature of how you guys play just, you know, continues to shine through. Was that, again, something that you thought that you could maybe exploit a little bit tonight, uh, yeah. running the football? That, that's our strength. Our, our, our strength is leaning on our seniors, which are those linemen and those big running backs. So, so. More than for those seniors here at home, so so we want to come out and, and let those seniors play. Yeah. Well, they did an, an amazing job as well. And then, it, of course, you guys came into this season with with so many you know big plans. Uh, you know, had a had a great season last year, well documented. Came up just just short. Do you think this is the ki type of performance that can maybe propel you to maybe reach those goals uh, in in the state playoffs this season? It, it, it's certainly a step closer. Uh, I, it's cliche. It's one one game at a time. Next, we'll come in tomorrow, see see what whomever the next team is, and, and, and keep going. Well, I can tell you, it's Tri Valley, and I think you guys will have a good shot. So, best of luck to you, and uh, good luck the rest of the season, Coach. All right, back to you guys. Nice job, Mariana. Thank you to Coach McKinney for uh, giving up his time here at the end of the game to uh, give us some comments. And boy, anytime your team can win forty-eight to nothing and not even attempt to pass kind of reminds me of uh, Hilliard Davidson a little yeah, bit. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, very much so. Do do what you do well. Right. And and there's not a thing wrong with that, Jared. Yep. Uh, you don't have to out scheme people. You just got to outplay people. Yeah. 
and, and, and that's a big thing. So, uh, yeah, very impressive. You know, you move on, you take it, you move on. And, you know, the kids here, they have high expectations. Yeah. They, they've been in high, high level play for the last two seasons. And when you're in the state playoffs and you get to the finals, you're there. Yep. Now, can you get it done? Let's go down yeah. to Marion for final thought. Marion, uh, this is a, a, a dominant win for Bloom Carroll. What, what do you think about next week, the matchup with Tri-Valley? Well, I think they've got a good shot. You know, as, as they say, uh, Bloom Carroll and, and Coach McKinney just told us, you know, defense always travels well and a good running game travels well also. Uh, so re regardless, again, Tri-Valley's had an incredible season. Uh, but I think with that strong running game and this defense, you know, the way they fly around the football, uh, they can be in any game and, and, and can take it all the way, certainly. Um, and I'll just tell you guys again, unfortunately, I'm not going to travel with you wherever the next game might be next, se next uh, week. But it has been an incredible season with you guys this season. I I've had a wonderful time as always. Uh, Jared, Chu, and, and, and Josh, and everybody um, um, behind the scenes, you guys have, have been more than professional as always. Uh, appreciate you guys always, you know, giving the stats. Uh, to me, I'm, I'm, I'm usually slacking on that part of it, but I can't tell you how much I appreciate you and, and how, how great of a season this has been for me. I always enjoy doing it and look forward to doing it more in the future. Feelings mutual, buddy. We uh, definitely appreciate all the work you do down on the sidelines, and uh, that, that's not an easy job, and you do it well. Yes, he does. We Thank appreciate you. it. Thank you, guys. Well, I want to say thanks again to our crew, our Interface Video Productions crew, Josh Messerly, our producer director tonight, in the truck with him uh, doing all the uh, technical stuff as Donnie Ziegfeld and Shane Messina on cameras tonight, Jason Rouse, Jim Spires, and Tom Russo. Again, your final score, Bloom Carroll over Beechcroft tonight in week number one of the high school playoffs, 48 to nothing. They will be moving on to take on Tri-Valley next week. For all of our Interface Video Productions crew and Marion Royster and Tim Shoemaker, I'm Jared Stewart. Have yourselves a great night, everybody. IVP Sports presents the Buffalo Wild Wings High School Football Game of the Week. Brought to you by Buckeye Toyota, Bay Food Market, Fairfield County Adam H., The Savings Bank, Sheridan Funeral Home, Fairfield Federal, Fairfield DD, The Frankie Smith Funeral Home, The Edwards Insurance Agency, Dagger Law, The Carriage Company, Personal Touch Party Rentals, North Body Shop, Fairfield Medical Center, and Buckeye Lake Marina. This has been an IVP Sports Production.